everyone is talking about the metaverse. Facebook changed its name to Meta. Nike recently acquired RTFKT Studios. Adidas just bought their first Board A Yacht Club and has this wonderful NFT collection that just launched as well. So, real estate in the metaverse is actually very similar in the real world. Okay, and in this video, I'm going to explain step by step why I think there's going to be a huge upside and a huge increase of demand in land in the metaverse specifically. I'm going to go over all the utilities, all the opportunities that I see, and why I personally will be getting into investing in real estate and land in the metaverse in 2022. Now, if you're new to my channel, I talk about everything metaverse, crypto, NFT, investing, entrepreneurship. I keep you updated with everything. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on my next video. Now, companies are rushing into the metaverse, much like Facebook, much like Nike, much like Adidas. We're seeing a lot of these blue chip companies, household names, getting into the crypto NFT metaverse space. And the reason why they're doing that is because they see a big opportunity like the gold rush in this industry. And as a real estate investor, real estate agent, I see so many parallels and opportunities with utilities, with leasing, with renting, with buying, with holding on to land, with real estate development in the metaverse space. And in this video, I want to go over it step by step because I know there's a lot of you out there who don't believe in the metaverse just yet or have their doubts about the space. Now, the first thing we want to address is the difference between centralization and decentralization. Now, for example, centralization is like Facebook, where Facebook would create a metaverse where they would own the rights to the whole metaverse in the Facebook space. They get to create all the rules and regulations around it in terms of use and services. Much like having a YouTube channel, much like having an Instagram profile, you have the ability to sell your products, you have the ability to promote certain brands and certain services, you have the ability to customize your profiles and to upload types of content to your liking on these platforms. However, inherently, Google, who owns YouTube and Facebook who owns Instagram, they own all the rights to these platforms. And as you know, as an influencer in this space, it can be very frustrating when they decide to just update the algorithm, whether they're introducing a new function or just for the sake of updating the algorithm. And they could just totally screw everything up because previously when you're posting content, or when you're catering your hashtags it might play to the favor of the algorithm but after the algorithm update it could potentially be of no value and that's extremely frustrating so that's centralization and centralized platforms and on the other hand we have decentralization and decentralized platforms and the two biggest players i see in the space right now are sandbox and decentraland and also axie infinity land so Essentially, with these decentralized platforms, any individual who has access to the internet and is running the operating system that they currently run on, which is Windows for Sandbox, for example, um, you have the opportunity to actually go into this metaverse free of charge and you can run around and see what the heck are people building, what exactly is going on in these spaces and to see the different plots of land for sales um, and to see kind of what's really built to give you some idea of the potential and opportunity that I believe is gonna be extremely tremendous in 2022. And the next thing I wanna address here is what exactly makes land valuable in the metaverse and what do you wanna look for? So the first thing you wanna think about is when it comes to real estate and land, just like in real life, we talk about location, location, location. So it depends on a few factors. It depends on where this land is located in this specific metaverse that we're talking about, how big the plot of land is, and what you can build on it. You know, 
very similar to real life situations. Um, now the first aspect of it is location, depending on what it is next to. For example, in Sandbox, if you know Snoop Dogg has this huge plot of land, and if Snoop Dogg is throwing a big party in the metaverse on the Sandbox platform, if you own a plot of land next to it, or if you're able to lease a plot of land next to it and put up a billboard, you will get a lot of attention because a lot of people are going to be attending the concert and be within the vicinity of the plot of land that the Snoop Dogg is throwing his concert on, right? So by association, by location, if you own a plot of land that's close to that, there is a big chance that there could be an increase in the value of the land very soon. Um, so ideally, it would be very smart for you to look for plots of land that are for sale by these big players, such as celebrities, Dogg, or by these big brands, such as Adidas, excuse me, Adidas or Nike as well. The second aspect that you really want to look out for is what you can build on this piece of land. Now, each metaverse specifically has different roles and different utilities. Much like in the real world, you have certain plots of land that are for agricultural use only, certain plots of land are for single family residential homes, and you have a higher density multifamily homes for apartment complexes, for high rises, for townhouses, and you have plots of land that are specifically for commercial use only. So what exactly can you build on these plots of land? Well, I did some research for you, so I did all the heavy lifting and I was kind of running around Sandbox to see what kind of creative pieces, what kind of creative architecture and masterpieces and all these wonderful things that people are doing in this space. So I was looking around and to my surprise, I saw a ton of really, really cool buildings that people are just kind of pouring their heart and soul out into. I also saw a lot of opportunities where people put billboards around to advertise you know, their own service or maybe someone else leased that space, put a billboard up um, to advertise another person's services stuff to get more exposure on the Sandbox platform. Uh, billboards, um, advertisements, um, another good way is to use it as this place to monetize. So um, I've seen people build out huge casino spaces where you can go in that casino and play in the metaverse. And I think that's a great opportunity to, you know, to make business of one of the great opportunities. I'm also if you put out like maybe if you put out like a bar where people can go and mingle and socialize in the metaverse, that would be tremendous as well. Um, or you can even sell physical products that are linked to your real life business. For example, if you're a real estate agent and you put up a billboard um, that advertise by Las Vegas, right? And then maybe someone internationally goes through the metaverse and kind of visits you and they see that sign and they want to invest in Las Vegas, they might actually reach out to you in real life. So now you can see the value and the potential of the metaverse and why I'm so excited about it. And you know, the beautiful thing about owning land in the metaverse is that, you know, people can pay you just like tenants can pay you uh, a rent every month or lease every month. The best part about owning land in the metaverse is actually there's no maintenance, right? If you really think about it, you don't have to pay for gas, you don't have to pay for utilities, for water, electricity, you don't have to pay for upkeep of the building as you would do in real life. You don't have to worry about your tenants flooding your freaking home. You don't have to worry about um, chasing after tenants to pay their monthly rent or lease. So that's something that I think is really cool because there's really no maintenance. You set it once, you forget it, and it's just constantly churning by itself. Now that we've addressed the opportunity and potential of real estate and land in the metaverse, I do want to get right into the concerns that you may have. So, I mean, what's stopping people from creating infinite metaverses, right? Like, that's probably the first question, because unlike Earth, there's only one of us. There's only one Earth that we live on, and maybe there's Mars that ha potentially has, you know, livability, but we're still kind of exploring the options there. In terms of the metaverse, you know, what is there to stop people from creating one, two, three, four, five, six, ten, hundred metaverses? Um, and how do you distinguish between 
which ones are the best ones and which ones are not. Just like in the real world, if you really think about it, a lot of the land is actually unused, right? We have a lot of land that's completely covered in water, um, covered in snow, covered in mountains, just inhabitable. Um, and that's one thing we want to address too. And the second thing we want to address too is that, you know, much like the real world, there's always going to be demand. There's a specific type of individuals that are attracted to a specific type of metaverse for the utility, for the culture, for the tradition, for the history, for the architecture, just like how people like to visit different parts of the world for different reasons. Much like that in the metaverse, there's going to be different purposes and reasons for people to want to grow and get to, you know, experience that specific metaverse. So I really don't think there's going to be, you know, too many metaverses and I really don't think there's going to be a good or bad or best or worse. It just really comes down to your personal opinion and that's the beauty of the whole metaverse on its own. Because each platform will have a different value proposition, each platform will have a different utility and a different clientele that is attracted to that space. With that all being said, you know, I hope this video gave you a good idea of why I'm so excited about the metaverse, about exactly what the metaverse is, the difference between central land and decentralized land, as well as the opportunities and the different utilities of these lands, and most importantly, addressing your concerns on it. So, just like how I see crypto similarly uh, to stocks, and how I see NFTs uh, similarly to you know building communities in real life, I see land and metaverse the way I see real estate and real life. And as illiquid as an asset it is, I just see so many opportunities to capitalize on this because it's completely underutilized and quite frankly most people don't even know about land and the metaverse and because they're very uneducated about it so i just see a lot of parallels between you know applying my expertise and my knowledge and my experience in real estate in real life to real estate and land in the metaverse so i'm really excited about the space and i can't wait to kind of jump into it um, i hope all of you listening to this are really excited about the space as well and if you found value in this video please make sure you give it a thumbs up and if you have any questions definitely leave it out in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe for more awesome content and i'll see you guys in the next one